Well, guys, it's an absolute pleasure. I'm speaking to Silverstein member Paul. And I can't pronounce your last name, Paul, but I'll say good evening from Australia and good morning from Australia. <clears throat> hey, how are you doing? So, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's evening here, but good uh, morning in Australia, I believe. Yeah, yeah. I haven't been to Canada since 2002, so I love the place. I can't wait to come back one time. But Silverstein is coming to Australia in May, and also it's a 10th anniversary of one of your great albums, and you're going to be playing that in its full entirety too. Are you looking forward to coming down yeah. to Australia, man? <clears throat> Absolutely. I mean, we've been coming down there for, for you know, a decade. And, um, <clears throat> you know, when we were playing the anniversary stuff, which is, you know, it, it's something we're only going to do once and then, you know, it's, we move on to something different. Um, you know, we absolutely wanted to take it to Australia. So we, you know, we planned it and we're excited that we're able to do it. And it's actually the, the final leg of the anniversary tour. We basically come down and, and do that. And then as soon as that's done, it's, it's time for our new album and that comes out. So it's, it's, a good, uh, it's a good end to that chapter. And then we can just continue uh, looking forward. It's it's so great to see that the album has still stand up over the course of the time, even now. Um, yeah, I mean, at least we find. I mean, it's not like some artists, you know, maybe have a pivotal record, but they haven't touched it or played it or in years. I mean, we still play those songs. We we change them out, you know, like and to our set, like a mm. couple here and there. <clears throat> but we still play them. We play them right next to. You our newest songs. And I think the catalog and specifically that record stands up the, the test of time. And um, I think that's why people still like it. And I think that's why people still like us, you know, it's just all in all, I think we've tried to remain consistent and stay true to ourselves. And it's really showed with our success. And it just goes to show that no matter how long the album can be, it can still go over well with the crowd as well, because what I see in the music business, being a fan myself, is that there's a, there's a similarity. They can sound good on the album, but when the song gets played live, it's another thing too. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, for us, I mean, there's no real bells and whistles. It's all just, you know, pretty organic sounds, both on the record and both when we play live. So it's always been pretty easy for us to recreate, and then we just kind of complement that with high energy, and that's just than what we do live and, and playing live is something we've done a lot so we've had a lot of experience doing it <clears throat> so whose idea was this to do an anniversary tour was it a collective group dis discussion or was it just something that needed to be done I mean it was unanimous on our side I think we just felt that the fan base would welcome it and maybe even expect it um, but the important thing that I, the idea that I had about it was that I didn't want it to be the kind of thing that you go and do this big celebratory tour and, and you have all this, the success, but then you duck away and then you think about what's next and what, what are you going to do? So we consciously went into the studio, um, wrote and recorded our new album, which is coming out, um, this May as well. And we had that kind of on deck because we wanted to launch the anniversary tour um, on the cusp of a new album. So that was very important to us that we had it lined up like that so that when people are looking back, they're also looking forward into our career. And that new album that's coming out is I'm Alive in Everything I Touch. Is yeah. Any of those songs going to be added into the set list as well? Absolutely, and, and that's also part of it because, I mean, we're going to be, you know, playing this album from start to finish, yeah. but we're not going to just leave it at that. We're going to do um, <clears throat> songs from all of our albums, including brand new stuff. We want to really show that, I mean, it's 15 years as a band. There's a lot of records. It's, the upcoming record is our, our seventh album um, as a band, so there's a lot of songs that we're going to be playing a good, uh, a good mix of all of them. <laughs> Over the course of the the careers that you have with Silverstein and that, how do you th think the the songs of particular albums go over to the crowd? Like, 
when a new single comes out, you play it for the first time, do you go, well, wow, it's really going over the crowd very well. How did you see that when you do play these songs live for the first time? Um, yeah, I mean, the, the one thing that's changed, and because we've been, been a band for so long, we've we've seen both sides of it. But, but nowadays, um, with the internet, um, you'll write and record a brand new song, you'll put it online, um, and a good chunk of your fan base will listen to it right away. So then if you were to play a show the next week, you know, like, yeah, we're going to play this new song, pretty good chance a lot of them have already listened to it online and you can stream it, you know, and listen to it time and time again. Um, back in the day, it was different because we would we would literally write and record a song and the first time anyone would hear it would be at the concert because, you know, the immediacy of the internet and, and the distribution way of getting it out wasn't there. Mm. So, um, so we're looking nowadays, I mean, yeah, it's like you play a new song and it almost gets the same reaction as something you've been playing for 10 years. So it's, it's kind of great in that way. Um, and it's definitely much easier being an artist like that because you don't have to try to win people over so hard with brand new material. You let them kind of digest it on their own first. And another good thing is too that social media helps a lot of bands out nowadays too. I mean, 20 years ago, we didn't have social media. We didn't really have right. much of the internet, really. But I, I suppose social media is another great way to help support the band in a long way as well. Absolutely, yeah. It, it helps. It helps us, I think, for us, um, really getting honest feedback and then also connecting with people, um, you know, two things that you kind of would be guessing on. Um, beforehand so it's really changed a lot of the way that we operate and there is a little bit of a downfall i'm not saying with silverstone but there with social media i mean you have so much of a fan base on social media but when they buy the album it's a total different story the numbers don't quite add up but that's just a bit of a damn if you do damn if you don't so to speak yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I mean, I mean. The, I think the one thing, I think the one reason why we have remained, you know, successful is what we do is that we embrace new technology. You know, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's, it's like, you know, as much as we'd love to still be selling CDs, you know, we're streaming our songs and we're selling more vinyl. You know, things change as times go on, and you know, as much as it'd be nice to not have all of the extra work of managing like five social networks. You know, it's it's great because it pays off because we're able to grow and share stuff a lot quicker. So it's like you just have to learn and adapt, and I think that that is very important if you want to stay relevant. Well, you you're obviously a fan of music. What would you prefer? You prefer the the old classic vinyls or the old digital sound now that you get on CD or iTunes, for instance. See, I like, I kind of like both because I like collecting, you know, vinyl and having the bigger format and the analog format and touching and feeling that. But I like having my iPod or my iPhone because then I can chuck, you know, hours and hours of music on there and I can travel with it, you know, because I can't travel with my record collection. So it's like without having both, I wouldn't have both pleasures. So it's... You know, and and I think even for for the whole band, that's kind of how we are. You know, we like collecting stuff, but we like, you know, we can just download something real, real quick on our phone and listen to it, you know, and it's there. It's like, both is really, really great nowadays. But <laughs> speaking of vinyl, nothing sounds like the classic vinyl back in the old days. I know the new vinyl's now is the 180 gram, and there is a little slight difference in the sound, but you can't really tell. It's just... It's a little bit clearer, a little bit crisper with the 180 gram, but nothing beat dropping the needle of the old vinyls that was out in the 70s and 90s, even early 80s as well. Nothing. Once you get that first needle drop, that's it. It just blows me away. No, absolutely, yeah. And, and it's we have been fortunate. Our entire catalog has always been released on vinyl. Yeah. And it, it's been interesting to see the way, you know, well, like our first record, we pressed like 500 copies and didn't press it again. And then it's now it's like you release a record and you're pressing thousands at the beginning because they're going to sell. They're going to sell out. And you want to like make it more collectible and even more rare and some more options. And it's, it's exciting because it's such a cool 
way to produce your art. You know, it's like music just exists in this kind of like auditorial, like, you know, space. It's, it, you can't really touch and feel it. And then when you have vinyl, you have all these cool colors and this big format and all this. It really kind of draws it all together and it, it makes it feel more like, you know, tangible art, I guess. Well, the new album's being recorded. It's going to be released very, very shortly. Are you expecting high expectations from this album? Um, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, we're working with um, with some new labels um, who are very enthusiastic. You know, um, we spent a lot of time writing and recording this record, which I think we needed just so we could produce the best the best material that we could. And I think the material um, is some, it's absolutely some of our best. I think we've really grown as we have from each record um, to become even better songwriters. And there's, um, there's a lot of great tracks on the record. And I think, you know, we're just in a good place with the band and I, I really do have high expectations for the record. Have you ever thought looking back when now you've gone on and matured, you look back at to the first material that you say, Ooh, I can make that sound a bit heavier now, or a bit more fresh. Have you ever thought about looking back and going, hmm, we have matured. Um, I mean, I think we have, yeah. So, I mean, there's recording quality and recording technology that's changed uh, dramatically. But it, it's one of those things I think it's it's been it's been helpful and kind of lucky for us because we've grown as technology has grown, and it means every new record's going to sound a little bit better. Um, you know, I think some artists come out and their first record is so overproduced, they can't even play the songs that well. And it's it's a lot to live up to and it's a lot to sustain. But when you grow with that and grow into it, yeah. it becomes more natural and you're not relying on that, that kind of stuff either. The only thing I don't um, like, especially with my favorite bands as well, like when they try to sound different, like trying to make that other... What I'm trying to say, a classic rock album, but turning into a reggae sound later on down the track. I mean, when John Farnham, one of the great Australian singers here in Australia, brought out, mm -hmm. let's say, for instance, brought out Age of Reason back in 1987. Now he changed the style of the sound of it now playing live. I'm going, no, it's not what it is. I'm not saying that's what you guys done, but you ever thought of doing that just to ramp up a little bit of flavor with the, with the original sound. Um, it, I mean, it's interesting because I think if you compare songs from the first even couple of records to yeah. um, what people haven't even heard on the brand new record, you know, if you were to compare it, you know, Apple to oranges, it'd be pretty drastic. But the one, the one advantage you have as being an artist is the, the vocalist and the vocals can unify almost any song. So you might have the heaviest riff we've ever done. And then you might have the softest ballad we've ever written. Yeah. But with the same vocals, it sounds like Silver Scene, and that really helps with us. It helps with a lot of bands. Um, but I think, I mean, there is pr quite a drastic difference. I mean, I think we've gotten a lot heavier. We've gotten a lot, <clears throat> you know, more up front with that kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> but it, like I said, all the songs can be played together. It just has a lot of variety. And we've always been a band that, like, maybe we'll have, like, a ballad, and maybe we'll have a really fast punk song, and then we'll have some straight-ahead pretty heavy rock songs and then we'll have some really dynamic different stuff um and I think that's what makes one of our records and that allows us to really to be a bit creative like kind of like you're suggesting and, and kind of explore different sounds and you've been brought up or the band's been brought up with a lot of influence and just to name a few no effects and metallica just to name a few is that good to those influence are now brought into the band to make your own original sound as well? <clears throat> um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's like, you know, when we started like 15 years ago, the sound that we have today didn't exist really. But, you know, we were blending punk and, and metal mm. and and with some pop sensibility. And, and that's what created what we did. It just happened and we've kind of lucked out that there's a bunch of other artists that started sounding like that too. Mm. Uh, we all kind of grew up together. And then I think we, again, it's just, you improve on songwriting 
And regardless of how heavy the riff is, you know, if you have a good structure and a good melody, um, that stands the test of time. It's not whatever trend or, you know, like kind of one thing you're trying to do. It's, it's all comes down to a good song. And, and regardless of how energetic or wild we want to try to make a song or an album, we, we care about the songwriting and the actual, you know, basis of that. Just a business question. How do you look at the business of music today? Is it hard for young bands to get the name out there and so forth? Um, I think it's hard for, for yeah, for young bands. I mean, I think it's always been hard, but there's more pressure. There's more competition. Um, and the people that want to get involved working with, with working with young bands want more, you know, because there's less money to go around. People are really, I think, taking advantage of that. Um, so it's unfortunate, you know, so it's like, unless you're just you got a young band and you're just super, super talented and you can say no to a lot of those things, you end up signing a lot of your life away and you end up working kind of an uphill battle, at least at first, you know, and hopefully it gets to where you want it to be. The competition's always been there somehow, the way I feel, but you think there's more competition now than there ever had been before? I, I think so also because of the internet, because before you would work in your own little pocket and you would develop and, and you, you're working in a small group and then building up there. Nowadays, it's like you're it on the internet just like everybody else. So it doesn't matter where you're from or what your community or your scene is all about. Mm. It's competing really with the world at once because it's all about everything online, <clears throat> all those numbers, all those connections. So you're... I think that makes it more competitive, for sure. Yeah. Well, guys, they're coming to Australia. If you haven't got your ticket, please do so. They're also going to be joined by Dream on Dreamer and some other great local talent here in Australia as well. If you haven't got your ticket, please do. You can get your tickets at all the participating outlets. They're starting on the 3rd of May, which is a Sunday up at the Hi-Fi in Brisbane and rounding out on the 10th of May at the Amplifier Bar over in Perth. You're also coming to an all-age gig here in Adelaide. Are you surprised that you're still doing some all-age gigs here in Australia? Because not many bands do them nowadays. Yeah, I guess, uh, I don't know if it's regionally something to do with um, laws or, or licensing or whatever. Uh, I mean, we always view ourselves as an all-age band. Um, and just sometimes, based on the territory, we're not able to do that. We just don't like to single any, anyone out. And I feel that, you know, even like our most, most recent North American tour that we just wrapped, we had like, you know, like 12 year olds singing along right beside a 30 year old, you know? And it's like, we have a diverse audience. We've been a band for so long. So there's different ways and eras of fans. And we, we like to try to, you know, offer that as much as we can. So there are some all-age shows, there's some, you know, not, but um, it, it's a good time either way. Yeah. Well, there you have it, guys. It's Silver Steiner coming to Australia. <laughs> They're performing, discovering the waterfront in its full. It's the 10th year anniversary of that album. And also, there'll be a new album coming out very, very shortly too. Make sure you get that at all your... Record stores right across Australia. Paul, it's absolute pleasure. It's all the time we've got for, man. But we'll be seeing you very shortly when you touch down in Australia. Sounds great. I really appreciate the time, and we'll see you then. Thanks, mate. Have a good day, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Right, bye. -bye. bye.